All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I apologize for my voice. Not doing well here. So we're going to muddle through this. All right. So Saturday morning previews from last night's games. And uh, yeah, it was uh, kind of an interesting night. We had uh, two shootout games and uh, a lot of high drama as well. All right, so we start off <clears throat> as we do. We I did all, you know, I always go through the games chronologically as far as when they started. So the first game on the docket was the Binghamton Black Bears playing their only game of the weekend, uh, traveling to Elmira. A great crowd on hand. Uh, that that was this twenty five ninety eight. This was the biggest crowd of the year in Elmira, and uh, they see the home team. Uh, doubling up the Black Bears 6-3. to three. This is the second time in three weeks that Elmira has beaten the Black Bears at home by a 6-3 to three final. So no scoring in the first. Both teams were kind of feeling each other out. And then uh, as we began the second period, it's Dominic Dumas uh, with his first goal since coming over from the Carolina Hurricanes in the trade. Uh, he gets Elmira on the board at 30 seconds. Uh, one of the college guys, Cameron Clark, counters for the Black Bears. That's a 740. And then Elmira just went on a tear, uh, capitalizing on a lot of turnovers by the Black Bears. Uh, David Gaeta, he scores at 1455. Uh, Mark Poser, uh, he ends up, I thought the puck was tipped on the way in, but Poser... Got the goal. Uh, he uh, shot it from the uh, from the uh, slot, and he ends up with his fourth goal of the year. And Elmira is up now three to one. Or early in the third, it's uh, Brett Parker scoring on a beautiful breakaway goal. He beats Nolan Egbert, and uh, so at this point, it's four to one. Uh, Coach Sherwood tries to get the boys going, and they respond briefly. We had goals by uh, Austin Thompson at 10:37 and Jake Schultz at 13:34. So the Black Bears are close, but Davidson, Darius Davidson, he ends up putting really the final nail in the coffin at 15:31 as he scores uh, another turnover, and it is now five to three. Elijah Wilson adds an empty net goal. And there we go, 6-3 to three final. Uh, Dominic Dumas, a goal and an assist for his efforts. And same for Darius Davidson. Uh, Sammy Bernard was very solid. Um, he looked very confident. 31 of 34 in saves. Uh, Nolan Egbert, uh, he gave it his all, but uh, came up short. Uh, 28 saves over the course of the night. And there you go. Uh, on to the first of the two shootout games, and that was Port Huron taking on Danbury. I thought Danbury had this game in hand. I think almost everybody did, and then the Prowlers pulled off a surprise. All right, so uh, it's Ian Wallace in goal for the Prowlers and Connor McCollum for the Hattricks. Um, and so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention because I always do this. Records with the previous game. Uh, Elmira now 17-25-0. So they are slowly climbing up the standings. Uh, Binghamton is now 28-6-6. Six, six. All right, back to uh, the Prowlers and Hattricks. Um, so Danbury starts off red hot. It's goals by Stosevsky. And Chase Harwell to put them up 2-0. But then Port Huron goes on a tear. And in a seven-minute span, they met three. It's goals by Liam Freeborn, Austin Federley, and on the power play, Alex Johnson. I believe that's Johnson's eighth power play goal of the year. I'm going to have to check. Um, so, yeah. So, at the end of one, Port Huron is up. But Danbury would uh, remedy that. In the second, Johnny Ruiz scores in the power play, and Josh LaBelle also on the power play. So Danbury is back up. 
Um, in the third period, it's uh, Bodanchenko. He ends up getting uh, uh, a goal at 6-10. And uh, so there you go. Um, Port Huron uh, mounts a furious comeback uh, in the last couple of minutes. They pull in Wallace. And Tucker Scannelbury scores with the extra attacker. And then... Matt Graham scores again with the extra attacker with three seconds left. It looked like Connor McCollum had the puck, but somehow uh, Graham dug it out and stuffed it home. And so it's 5-5. We go to overtime, kind of an innocuous overtime period. So on to the shootout. And uh, yeah, so in five rounds, it's 2-1 to one in favor of the... Uh, hat tricks. It's Jacob Ratcliffe ends up getting the uh, the winning goal. So, yeah, six to five uh, in favor of Danbury. Uh, two goals by Austin Federley plus an assist. Graham had a goal and two assists. Wallace, his stats: uh, thirty four saves, thirty nine opportunities in sixty three forty four, and nine kicked posts one of which got a penalty. Uh, for Danbury, Brand, uh, Bones and Chinko had a goal and two assists. Uh, uh, Xavier Abdella, we don't talk about him a lot because he's a stay-at-home guy. Uh, but he ended up getting two assists for the hat tricks on the blue line. And uh, Connor McCollum, 31 saves, 36 opportunities. So Danbury improves to 22-16-4, Port Huron falling to 19-14-6. This was the first game in uh, a three-game set. Dalton J did not have a point, so we're still waiting for him to get to number 500. All right, Blue Ridge Bobcats um, and Motor City Rockers. These two teams are very even, and yeah, again, it goes down to the wire. It's a shootout win for the Rockers at home. Uh, but these two teams are strangely evenly matched. Uh, you never know what you're going to get when these two teams get together, um, which is good. That's that's good hockey. Um, all right, so the game starts off. Josh Colton gets on the board for first for the Rockers uh, at 544 in the first. Uh, in the second, it's... Scott Coash adding a goal. And then uh, Blue Ridge mounts a comeback. Uh, in the second period, Blue Ridge controlled the play the majority of the period. Uh, Cody Oaks scores to draw the Bobcats within one. And then the third period, it's Nikita Vashkin who has rediscovered his game. Um, yeah, he scores at 13.59. Uh, ties things up. We go to overtime. Nothing doing, so again, we go to a shootout, and we have no, 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 yes by T.J. Sneath. Sneath gets the uh, the deciding uh, shootout goal, and Motor City earns the extra point, and so in a shootout, it's 3-2. to two. Shots were 39 for Blue Ridge, 33 for Motor City. Um yeah, so Avashkin with a goal and an assist on Oaks' goal. So, yeah, good on him. Uh, Connor Green played very, very well once again for the Bobcats. Um, his win-loss record does not reflect how well he has been playing. But, uh, yeah, Green Green's a keeper in more than one sense. Uh, 31 saves and 33 opportunities. Uh, for the Rockers, Danny w Vanderweel, he had a couple of assists. So since he's come back, he's uh, been uh, he's been the setup guy and uh, been uh, uh, helping the team succeed since he's returned. Uh, Trevor Babin, 37 saves and 39 opportunities. He gets the win. Uh, crowd is 669 on hand. And that's got to pick up. All right. Uh, so Blue Ridge is now 12, 23, and 6. Meanwhile, Motor City improving to 24, 14, and 4. All right. In the south, we go down south. Care, uh, Columbus, excuse me. Uh, they take care of Mississippi again. 
ninth straight win in the head-to-head meetings. Uh, it's a seven to two victory. Um, and, and this was pretty much decided in the first period as Columbus explodes for four goals. Uh, Nolan Sujeta, uh, you got Cody Wickline scoring the power play. Austin Doe, what a game he had. A goal and three assists. Alexander Jameev, who hasn't been on the board lately, uh, he gets a goal. So, yeah, that's goal number four. In the second period, Joaquin Nilsson gets Mississippi on the board, but then that's countered by Justin McDonald. Uh, and uh, so we end up in the third period. It's 5-1 to one. in the third. Goals by Hunter Bassani and Ryan Hunter put the game away. Um, Hugo Koch, he scores late. Uh, about a minute four left. So yeah, it's a little bit of an up note for the Mississippi Seawolves. But again, they're trying to figure things out offensively. Having Justin Portillo in the lineup will help. But uh, yeah, they, they are sorely lacking in offense as of late. So it's a 7-2 to two win for the River Dragons out shooting uh, Mississippi 40-36. to 36. And... Uh, Austin Doe, uh, we mentioned what he did. Uh, J Mac, another goal and two assists. So, you know, he's running away with the scoring title right now at this point. Brennan Colgan gets his 18th win of the year. Yeah, it doesn't seem possible, but yeah, 18 wins for Brennan Colgan, 33 saves for the night. And for Mississippi, kind of a miserable night for Joseph Shepard. Um, yeah, anytime you're facing the River Dragons, you're going to have a rough night. But, yeah, 33 saves out of 40 opportunities. Um, Mississippi only playing 16. Uh, they still need a couple people on the roster. So, um, again, having Portillo helped. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they've got to they've gotta generate more. So, Kara, uh, Kara. Wow, I'm tired. Columbus improves to 33, 4 and 2, still leading the way in the league. Mississippi now 18, 20, and 3. And finally, um, Carolina, this time they bring their whole team and they handle the Baton Rouge Zydeco. But man, look at that crowd. That is the second biggest crowd this year in the Fed. Uh, the only bigger crowd was earlier this year when Columbus sold out their house and had uh, 7,700 on hand. So, yeah, good on you, Baton Rouge. Zydeco fans, you should be proud. I, I know the team's struggling, and uh, but, but you guys keep showing up. You keep filling the house, and there's a lot of great energy that I see from the crowd, and so good on you. Uh, some other teams could learn from you guys. All right, so Carolina, uh, they rip off five in a row. Um, it just... Uh, Phenomenal start. So it's uh, Dawson Baker scoring the first goal again, um, like he did on Thursday night. Uh, Clay Keeley, he gets on the board. We usually talk about Nate Keeley when it comes to the goals scored, but this time it's Clay. Uh, Yuri Pastuka scores early in the second. Jan Salak adds one uh, midway through the second. And Jacob Schnapp uh, rounds up the five in a row. Uh, he scores 13-07. And at this point, the only question is, does Cody Karpinski get the shutout? No. Thomas McGuire, new signee for the uh, Zydeco. He scores with uh, night at 1907. So uh, you got it. <laughs> um, 1907 of the period. The ruins a shutout bid, but Karpinski played well. And it's a 5-1 win. Uh, Clay Keeley, a goal and assist. Uh, same for Yuri Pastuka. And uh, Karpinski, 22 saves on the night. And uh, Billy Stevens, uh, the poor guy, um, <laughs> 29 saves, 34 opportunities. Uh, so there you go. Carolina is now 29-10-1. They solidify their second place position. Baton Rouge, 9-26-4. All right, so that is the wrap-up of last night's games. We've got four on the slate for tonight. Hopefully, I'll have more of a voice tomorrow. Again, I apologize, but uh, it is the season. All right, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and follow me on Spotify, here on YouTube, and on Facebook. 
Have a good day, everyone.